previously on Rain Man. So Dean Kane says uh, he actually tweets to Michael Moore. He says, disparage Chris Kyle to my face. We'll see who is a coward. And he put hashtag disrespect, hashtag coward. So, and there was no response. Michael Moore didn't respond to, D- to Superman. That's because he was collecting kryptonite. So stupid. Do you, think he, do you think when he tweeted this, he put his uniform on and his cape? <laughs> Or I don't feel comfortable. Because, you, you know, what if I want Stephen Mill to come over from Arrow and he's a psychopathic killer? We, we, we don't know. Yeah, you know. Just it, because he's an Arrow doesn't mean he's not a, a psychotic person. You know, like oh, they say, you don't, you don't want to invite the vampires in. You know, that's, 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 how it, that's how it usually is. Yeah, we don't know how well that, re, that resending invitation works. I mean, does the resend invitation actually work as the lore dictates? I mean, yeah. will they go flying away like Bill Compton in True Blood? But Either. can you imagine if Stephen Amell came in, you invited him in? And the next thing you know, he's trying to convert you to like some strange religion. Or he's plowing my girlfriend. I'm like, what the hell, yeah. dude? <laughs> I think she might be okay with that. Mm. <laughs> oh, Steve Amell, Amell me. Amell me. <laughs> You can know, you, like trying to get into this. Can country. you imagine Tony going to Mexico? Let's go to Mexico tomorrow, Tony. Let's go to you and I. Let's go to Mexico to visit. No, we're gonna go to Mexico. We're gonna live there for free. We're gonna do nothing. We're gonna go and then we're gonna bitch. Why is there? Where is? Why is there a Mexican flag above this consulate here? <laughs> why is there a Mexican flag in the schools? Why? Because you're in fucking Mexico. Am I going to complain about it when I'm in another country? Am I going to complain about their laws? No, because I'm living a privileged life in that said country. And now, from the Cave of Wonders and recorded live in the presence of gods, welcome to the Rain Man Show. Everybody. Oh, this is the Rain Man Show. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Whatever it may be when you're choosing to click play and tune into this show. And I also want to thank you for the massive, massive feedback that we got. Good feedback, not bad feedback. Good feedback that we had on our last broadcast. Uh, 2015 is going to be huge, Tony. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I got, just wait. You guys wait. got some good vibes you feel? You yeah. feel a strong presence in the force? Yeah. <laughs> in my shorts as well. Oh, okay. oh yeah. 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 Uh, so we'll get all to that. We'll, we'll get to all that, Tony. Just calm down. Uh, today we do have in studio, Tony. We do have somebody new. Right across the way, we have Kaylee. She's joining the show. How are you, Kaylee? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for coming down here today. Um, You know what? Now, I'm just going to say this right now. This is a trial period. Not trial because I don't trust Kaylee. <laughs> it's trial because I don't know if she's going to like me no. once she hears me on the microphone. I mean, how many bridges have we burned bringing people onto the show who I had a good relationship it's on okay. with? It's okay. You can say that I'm not trustworthy. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, if she walks out in the middle of the show, then I think right. that's the, that's like, the telling point. Them out. Right, there. right. Or she <laughs> develops some weird lesbian relationship with Maggie and then decides to call me an asshole. Like someone we're going to get to later. Because yeah. believe wait, me, because believe wait. me, we're going to get into that as Whoa, well. Because there. I actually had listeners see this post on my Facebook. Yeah, they asked about So a little bit of a controversy mm-hmm. in, the, in the world of Rain Man. You know, Whoa. so. Whoa. Really, what else is new? Yeah. <laughs> It was just finally aired. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's it's been settled for quite a long time, but it brought it came back. But yeah. we'll get into that. Um, number one though, Tony is uh, you know, I think my eternal bitch of uh, GoDaddy and their lack of service. You know, I, I felt like a complete numbskull because usually I'm the one who calls tech service, you know, tech support, and I end up knowing more than them. That's why I never ever call tech support because it's frustrating. Like, well, sir, did you? turn off your router and wait 10 seconds. I'm like, you son of a bitch. I'm like, you guys have been asking that for like 10 years. You would think I would. Yes. Yes. 
I run an internet radio network. I think I know how to run a, ne- a router. You're, you're familiar with the routine, the usual uh, question, the screening questions, like, yeah. uh, is your computer plugged in? Yeah. Is your monitor plugged in? Yeah, and, they add, and you know what? And to be fair, I understand there's a lot of stupid people out there. So if anybody's ever worked in the customer service realm, I think they, they get it. And, and, you know, and I get it, too. But however... GoDaddy, I guess, has me, me and my entire network for the past four years. We're on an old server, so we're constantly having issues. Our website goes down for no reason, and nobody could ever give me a straight answer. And then about a year ago, the one of the guys from Go, GoDaddy said, you're on an old, old server. Uh-huh. Let's upgrade you. I'm like, okay, sweet. How much does it cost? And he's all, oh, it's nothing. We're just going to upgrade you, bring you to a new server, because right now you are, you're, on, you're on an archaic server. He was very nice about it. Did it? Did make- he emphasize the word archaic? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. really? And I'm like, I'm like, dude. I mean, don't. Aren't, shouldn't you guys be careful with your choice of words? I mean, this is your servers that you put me on. <laughs> and uh, Mike, so, they're punking you. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, no. Won't. I wish. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're, they're like saying it's. T- it's that account again. Yeah. Is it, I think it's time for us to finally tell them the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So I um. So I then talk to this guy. He switches me over. Fine, right? A year later, I'm having issues again. I, I, I talk to somebody else. They tell me about two months ago. They say, hey, you know what? You have, uh, you, you're, have, you're on an old server. I'm like, what? No, I, I just upgraded less than a year ago. He's all, oh, no, no, no. You upgraded from our old archaic system. He used the archaic word, too. Now you're on an old server that we're also trying to phase out. And I'm like, well, how long ago were you trying to phase this server out? Oh, for a couple of years. Now I'm like, then why would you phase? <laughs> why would you transport all my media and data to this old server that you guys have been trying to phase out for the last two years? Well, well, you know, that was the step one, you know, step one. Now, step two, we're going to upgrade again. We're going to get you on a new server. And then I'm like, you know, I don't have time for this because they want to charge me six hundred dollars to transfer everything oh. that I have. And I'm like, you know what? I'll do it on my own because they said you can do it on your own, which is going to take about all the stuff that we have from the past four years. Imagine that a lot of content. Okay. So they want me to transfer it. And I'm like, I'll do it. Fine. I'll take a couple weeks and I'll just do it. And they assured me that my white site wouldn't go down as I'm transferring. Everything will stay the same, but I, I, but I don't have time to do it. I'll do it in a couple months. So I'm having issues again. This is the last week. I call GoDaddy again. This time a woman gets on the line. And she's laughing at me when yeah. she looks at the service that I have. She's all, she's snickering. She's actually snickering. It sounds like she was making fun of my genitalia. That's what she's like. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. I'm like, what are you giggling about over so there? So repressed memories came back. Then. Yes. I felt very threatened. <laughs> I was going to go shoot up a, a woman's g- a workout center and be so stupid. You needed uh, a hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, um, I'm like, are you laughing at me? Like, I actually said that. <laughs> and she's all, well, sir, yeah, well, I just noticed that you're on a very old server. And I'm like, a very old server? I just upgraded last year. She's like, oh, that's an old server still. You were on the, you previously, you were on an archaic system again. Huh. She's like, but now you're on just a regular old, an you see, old server. You see, you see the pattern here? Yeah. You know, like, it's like, we're going to upgrade you, but we're really going to upgrade you to, from a server that was maybe 10 years old, now to a server that's, Seven years. Why old. not? Instead of spending all this, these, your dollar bills and all this money into advertising Danica Patrick and all your dumb Super Bowl commercials and all your your dumb over the top commercialized promotions, why don't you work on getting us all onto new servers without charging us money? Because no one knows any better. To make a long story short, I had to sit through about 10 minutes of this woman laughing at everything she asked me. Wow. She's like, well, how come you haven't transferred over yet? I'm like, well, I didn't know there was another server yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> oh, what a stupid ass. <laughs> like, so I'm like, well, what do you suggest that I do? She's like, well, sir, I suggest you get onto another server of, immediately. And I'm like, okay, well, then let's do that. She's like, well, it's going to cost you $600. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to have to wait. Same old story again. So I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to have to wait. She's like, sir, I, you use this for radio? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, you are on the wrong server. You should have never been put on this server. And I'm just like, are you, I can't believe you're laughing at me right now. No, she was trying me. to say, I'm laughing with you. Yeah. I'm laughing <laughs> with you. Not at you, with you. Needless to say, it's always, I mean, anybody who's listened to our show now for the past four years knows the ongoing battle I've had with GoDaddy. And, and people say, why don't you just switch? It is such a process to oh, yeah. switch when you have this much built up on this company now. You have all these, all the files, you have all these domain names. It just, it, 
it is worth it, but I got to pick a day and say, listen, we're going to go off the air for a few weeks and I'm just going to do it. I can't take it anymore. I just can't. Um, But also the American Sniper uh, bit that we did last week where we had a big discussion, American Sniper was actually a huge success. Got a lot of a lot of uh, emails and stitchers comments about it. In fact, I'm going to pull it up. Give me 10 seconds here. Um, which I was kind of surprised because I was kind of thinking maybe because everybody is anti-government, anti-war, anti-police, anti-soldier, anti-everything. If there's any type of like authority, it's cool to hate it. So I kind of figured people would be kind of pissed off that I defended the American Sniper film. And it wasn't, if you listen to it, it wasn't me defending. It was just kind of having common sense, you know, and I'm like, why are we going to hate a man who basically laid down uh, his life and his and his sanity for all of us to be able to bitch about him on the Facebook and say he's he's a terrible person. Be, that so right, that right <laughs> that you're doing, that you saying that he's a murderer is what he fought for for you to do. That was his job. <laughs> I, I, but I, the thing is, I respect him for that. <laughs> yes, because well, it's well, his job. And then, of course, people got ab- upset about the slang words. I covered it all, so I'm not going to do it again. About him calling people towel heads and saying that he hated the savages. I'm like, listen, you're at war. What don't you call your enemy? I'm sure they say You're at war. You're (laughs) killing people with guns. You don't, oh, he's such a nice young fellow. Let's try love. He's such a butthead. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) that's not going to work. That's not good. You're at war. You're shooting and killing people who want to shoot, murder, and kill you. Let's just leave him with a stern warning. You know, like (laughs) uh, a stern warning, like, okay, stop shooting at me. And then I'll, we'll forget this incident. (laughs) All right. Okay, here we go. We're, we're getting off on the wrong foot. So uh, Piper Knight on Stitcher says three things. I purchased the Zombies Zen wine last night. Cool bottle, very average wine. I, I I said that. I already said. Didn't I say it was a poor? It was a cool bottle, cool marketing, but terrible wine. It wasn't okay. terrible. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't. It was, okay. it was a ten dollar bottle of wine you buy from Circle K. I'm not, I'm not said. <laughs> Number two, X Files reboot needs to happen. Okay, pronto because we talked about that. Number three, your points on the American Sniper was perfectly laid out and made lots of sense. Unfortunately, most people nowadays don't stop to think, nor do they have common sense. <laughs> and then you put great show. Um, let's see. Then we have Johnny Five says the end is in sight. Humanity is getting progressively ignorant. We are supposed to be evolving, and yet it would seem that we are continuing to revert, revert back to uneducated times. Uneducated? Uneducated, uneducated times. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So this American sniper, uh, okay, this American sni- sniper debacle is a perfect example of this. I agree with what you said 100%. All right. So no naysayers sure. yet. Well, let's see. We have a couple more. Um, okay, Gothic Chick says, brilliant commentary on the American Sniper, the way you laid out all the facts without any bias or insults was the best way to tackle the situation. You know, and, and, and I agree with that, and that's why I did it that way. I was going to do it very non-controversial. I wasn't going to insult anybody for thinking what they want, but I also was going to lay out the facts. I'm like, you know, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a message, if you will. And you, you decide after I lay out all the facts for you. So I'm thinking because we had such a good and there's more on Facebook as well, but I don't have time to get into it. But um, I'm thinking about actually taking that clip, putting it on SoundCloud and see if we can get that shit to go viral. Yeah, there you go. That'd be awesome. You know, if people are liking it. Why not? See what see, see how, how it works. We'll, we'll check it out. Nothing to lose. So look for that. Share it. Coming to SoundCloud soon. So dumb. <laughs> Words of wisdom from Rain Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a, <laughs> a, a no radio play. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a. Never mind. I'm not gonna go there. But anyways, all right. So Super Bowl controversy. I, I think anybody who's known. Once again, we're getting really uh, old school here. But anybody that knows me, that listened to me for the last four years, should know that I'm going to say. Listen, Halloween. Guess what's going to happen? Michael Flores is going to bitch. Okay. <laughs> uh, go, Daddy. Michael's going to bitch. And then the Super Bowl time. Guess. Guess what? Michael's I'm going to bitch. bitch. OK, because I think that I, I'll never understand the 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 enthusiasm behind the Super Bowl in any ways. And I'm not going to get into that either. OK, because I've already killed that to, uh, you know, beyond recognition. However, I just made a simple post saying because one thing that frustrates me is Super Bowl is not is not a holiday, right? It's not no. a holiday for some people. It, it's Apparently. Not, no, yeah. it's not a holiday for anybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. It's, it's an ethnic sporting event. The, they've always wanted. There's always that talk that they wanted to have Super Bowl Monday to be 
a holiday so that oh, people so can that, recover. Yeah, oh I, I read it. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. How, no about you be, how about you be a responsible adult and tuck yourself in early that night? That's like, cute. how about that? Yeah. Not if they ever do that, I quit. I quit this world. If they make <laughs> Monday a holiday, I'm moving to the moon. Like, no, no, no. I'm going to volunteer. My, you remember how they're taking I'll volunteers go to, to go to Mars? Yeah, I'm going to volunteer to go I'll to Mars. Go to Mars. <laughs> but let's start. You a really smart... have to drink that much to where you need a holiday to like Apparently. fucking recover. Apparently, Ugh. move to the new planet that they found that's like Earth in our solar system. There we I'm, go. I'm headed there, and I'm going to shoot everybody who volunteers to go. I will. I will kill them. Anybody that doesn't have common sense, like, hey, do you believe American Sniper is bad? Like, <laughs> boom! How's oh, that? So you'll have, like, your own screening questions before yeah. they board the ship. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, do you believe in gay marriage? Uh, do you... Uh, do you like GoDaddy? Do you, do you, want, do you like GoDaddy? Do you, uh, do you like Pat Robertson? And if you say you like Pat Robertson and you don't you're agree with gay marriage, guess what? You're going to get a gunshot to your head because I'm a tyrant. You better, you better be happy. I don't. I'm not the president. <laughs> So, all right. So on Facebook, I read, I wrote, hey, store owners, the Super Bowl is not a holiday. Please quit acting like it is and closing your business early. Some of us like to do things on Sundays. Thanks. <laughs> it was just like a stupid thought because I was just at, at that time, literally five minutes, because that's what I do. I get upset and I post on Facebook and I was uh, talking to my, my kid's hockey coach and she said there's no class Sunday at two o'clock because they're closing early for the Super Bowl. And I, and I immediately saw red. Like, I'm like, I'm like, you're going to close a, an event, a coaching event for my kid to, to participate in sports so that you guys can all go home and watch the Super Bowl? Like, what happened to running a business? Our economy is in shambles, and yet they want to close business, businesses early so they can celebrate one event that brings in money to the NFL. One, Everyone's one. spending money to celebrate the NFL. That's not helping anybody. I like on, on don't they close early enough anyway on a Sunday regularly? I mean, right. it's not like you know they people go home around five six o'clock. You yeah, it's still like uh, there's TiVo. There's yeah. TiVo. Yeah, you and, and you know what? And I'm not opposed. That's logic though, Tony. Yeah, common, you know what? Common Hon- sense. Honestly, common sense. Even, common sense. Even you know, like uh, it's affecting the it's affecting the church yeah. because you know <laughs> I, church is closed I, I early. Went to, I went no, I went to service usually on a Saturday afternoon, four thirty. The church wasn't open. No, half of the crowd wasn't there. Wow. And it was easy to get in and find a seat. Wow. It was easy to find a seat on uh, because you know that's who's usually going to heaven. <laughs> Tony, you made it to heaven. Well, I have to. My yeah, mom's yeah. like, uh, <laughs> you made it face. to heaven. That's you, all I got to say. You made it. You no, made I mean, I, went job. There. I just went there. You know, I said, you know, what the hell? I don't really care that much about the game. Never. I'll, I'll see the game, but I'll, I could just go in there and it's not going to kill me to miss the first quarter. Hardly anybody was in there. And I'm like, but, going, but wow. Tony, but Tony, you might miss some really cool commercials. Something. Some really cool ones. Or get really mad at them. Ones. You might, yeah. <laughs> you, you mean even that one where the kid gets killed? Yeah. That's yeah. just good humor. Oh, I, I, I thought I found humor in that. It was oh. a good commercial. Uh, okay, so my and my problem isn't with the Super Bowl or the event. Like I understand it's a sporting event, it's a big event. I get that, but when everybody drops everything that they're doing, and it's not just like Tony, you if you were to say, "Hey, I'm going to celebrate the Super Bowl, and I'm going to get butt." I'm going to get, I'm going to strip down naked. I'm going to drink. I would be like, you know what? Go for it, Tony, because I know you're a sports freak. You love sports. But when you have Betty Sue, Fatty McGee Thompson across the street over here, who doesn't even know what football is. And she's like, oh, I got to watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm like, why do you even know what's going on? You don't know what's going on. You're watching it because it's a commercialized propaganda. And that's what I get. I'm like, do you realize you guys are all pining to be sold to? That's all it is. You guys are all pining to sit in front of that TV and watch, hey, guys, out there, eh, this 30, the next 30 seconds, 30 seconds of this broadcast is sponsored by Coca-Cola. It's the <laughs> next 30 seconds is uh, sponsored by Pepsi. Like, that's what it is. The enti- you can't even get through a, a, a commentary without the guy saying, this, hey, coming up next is whatever, whatever, you know, my, my best friend's wedding TV show, whatever, whatever show's coming on. Am I wrong? Like no, every, no. I mean, no, everything, speaking, everything is a segue. Have you noticed that? No, everything. The entire is like, broadcast is a segue. That it's not even about the game. You're watching exactly. the game, and it's about what you're going to promote. As soon as the ball is 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 uh, is uh, as soon as the clock stops, guess what? It's time for it's time to shove shit down your throat. Well, this year was the most um, 
expensive ad time. Yeah. Yeah. Four and a half it, million yeah. dollars a, for, for what, 30 seconds? 30 seconds. People, people will watch the Super Bowl just for the commercials. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and this then was bitch ha- about this them. Ha- yeah. This <laughs> happened to be the most watched think about ever this. program. Think, think about this. Four and, a half mil- four and a half million dollars for 30 seconds? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Think about that. This is why people in other countries hate us well, uh, and <laughs> because it was they're record- starving okay yeah. they're starving but for some reason state farm can afford i'm just pulling names out here state farm nationwide. can afford nationwide can afford four and a half million dollars for a 30 second commercial yeah didn't and- they have a few of them too so how much did they really spend <laughs> oh, god that's insane million. and then this how can you go to sleep at night viewers <laughs> I mean, how can you go to sleep at night spending that kind of money on 30 seconds? I, I mean, I can't imagine the return. They're sleeping on the money. Uh, can you imagine? The, I can't imagine the return being that big. Oh, stay farm. I'm going to I'm gonna join well, them. Well, especially since or they whatever just everyone off. Nationwide. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join Nationwide because I saw them in the Super Bowl. No, they like, won't because they screwed themselves and everyone's pissed off at that commercial that they made. Actually, so, they made all depressing commercials this year. Yeah. yeah, it's probably pissed off at every single one of them. <laughs> well, <laughs> people just love to bitch. And and then, you know, first off, guys, 99% of this world now has DVRs. And we, what do we do when we watch TV? We DVR stuff. And what do we do? Fast forward to the commercials. We fast forward to the commercials. The commercials and yeah. yet, for some reason, we want to watch Super Bowl commercials that aren't, that aren't that clever. And guess what, guys? Within five minutes of it airing, they put it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So you can bypass all the shenanigans and just watch your favorite Brad Pitt drinking Heineken, running away from bad guy commercial because it's so awesome. <laughs> so, anyways, my my post got a few people upset. Well, one person, you know, one person just in particular, one. and yes. I don't think it was a, about being upset. Ryan Denton made a post, and I don't care what Ryan Denton does because he's from Supernatural: The Crossroads. He's his joke is to be a troll. That is what he does. Be, just That's between why we love and, him. The reason why we brought him on the network because we call he's, him. He's, we call, a pl- he's a planted troll, right? And yeah. he does it to be stupid. He even said, "Dude, I was." Jo-, he sent me a message. I'm like, "I was fucking joking, dude." I'm so. In fact, I think he said it on the post. He apologized because yeah. I didn't realize I started this. Because basically, you know how it is when someone doesn't like you very much. All they needs one person to kind of say it's okay. Talk shit. Talk shit. So of course, Ryan said mentioned something about the Super Bowl, and then all of a sudden, Aisha. Goes on the post. Uh, Aisha, if you guys remember, she was on our show for the, what, maybe five shows? Six maybe. shows? Yeah. Um, and I've never really discussed why she left. I was pretty, I was pretty uh, respectful as to why she left the network. Because I don't air out people's dirty laundry if, if it doesn't need to be. And I thought it was, you know, it was kind of a mutual split. Um, but to be honest with you, the only reason why I didn't fire her was because I didn't, I wanted to be professional because I hate, I didn't like her. I'll just say it right now. I hated her and I, I only, I hate her. Like I don't hate people and I did not like her. Everyone's like, dude, why don't you, she's horrible. No one, no, nobody like everyone hated her. Nobody liked her on the network. They're like, dude, why do you have her on the show? If you don't like her, I'm like, because I don't want to, I don't want someone, I don't want to fire someone from the network because I don't like them. I want to fire them from the network because they suck at broadcasting or they just don't offer nothing. That's why. I don't want to fire someone because I don't like them. I, I, that's not professional. Like, I don't want to run a business that way. So, so I gave her the benefit of the doubt. And all she ever did was heckle the show. While she's doing the show, she tried everything in her power to argue with me every step of the way. I'm like, listen, this isn't the middle of the live show that we did. This isn't an open forum where we all discuss and debate. And it's like, a, you know, the men's version of the, 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 view. the view. This is the Rain Man show. I talk. You guys can give me some opinions. But after, after I say, hey, this is how it is, I don't, I don't want arguments. Like, it's, it, it, I, we're not here to debate things. We're here to have a discussion. There's a difference. And and she couldn't grasp that. She wanted to fight. She wanted to fight. She, well, she even hated she you. even hijacked the entire show. She hijacked the entire show once. We had to like throw the entire show in the trash because she basically didn't like something I said. Decided to insult me personally. Bring up things on the air that was very personal and assault things pertaining to my personal life, which I'm very open about my personal life. I'm still not going to go there right now, but but we think that she had uh, some odd longing for maggie because every chance obsession i would say yeah every chance because every uh, people most people know that maggie and i are, are engaged and i think she every chance she got she'd be like i don't understand why i don't understand why uh maggie's with, maggie's you. with you like you're such a jerk I, this must be a facade on the radio because I, I don't understand why a cool chick would like you like that i mean believe it or not aisha but you know i i, I people like me I'm like, I ha- and she always I don't found. Know what she based that on. Though. She always found a point to insult me, and I said, Aisha, the funny thing is, is that people don't like you, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, so and that's true. and that's usually funny. Like, don't you find it like that, Kaylee? Usually, when someone has a problem, when there's smoke, there's fire. Oh yeah. And if that person always have problems with people, chances are, guess what? The problem's you. Yeah. 
And I tried to be very nice. I never, and everybody can attest to this in the studio, that I never flipped on her, which everybody was amazed because, you know, if this was a year ago, Michael, I would have thrown shit and I would have like scorned her on the air, but I'm trying to turn over a new leaf and be <laughs> more professional and be different and be nice on the air. So I, I didn't, I just didn't air the show because it was, it was just her being a tyrant for no reason. And I wasn't going to play her game. So she enters getting back to this Facebook post. She gets up here and she says, it's Sunday. Shit always is cl- closes early. I think you will survive missing a couple extra shopping hours, uh, madam. So people can enjoy a nearly half century old American pastime. It's one fucking day a year. I think a, a, a might all will help you cope. Cause only a, only bitches on the rag whine about occurrences of the Super Bowl. You see, it started that- out okay, but then as soon as it started getting personal <laughs> towards the end, I'm like going, I'm like, that was unnecessary. And first off, gross. Yeah, yeah, first off, I, don't, I can't imagine. She misspelled rag. That's all I got to say. She's a female and she, she misspelled rag. Yeah. How, do you, how do you do that? Because she's an ignorant, <laughs> ignorant know. person. She's, not, she's, she's one of those wannabe uh, millennials. I should say oh, where she's where a she's wannabe feminist. She, and listen, I, I think we're all millennials technically in this room, but I mean, she's one of those wannabe like I flag waver of every of every single thing she can hold on to, every agenda, and she thought she was fighting some cause against me that I was horrible person, <laughs> and she was going to fight this cause and wage war against me, and she fa- finally first time she actually said something like this, and I was like, listen, I'm all for jokes. If Kay- Kaylee, if you wrote something like that to me. I would laugh if, yeah. if, if Tony did something because I know you guys actually like me. This <laughs> no, was I don't like to, it. I don't like you. I know. I'm in love with Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> I know who, uh, David would always like you no matter what. <laughs> 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 Dave would always like uh, like like uh, follow you like a puppy. So, Aww. Aww. Me and David are good. So <laughs> so then she, I, I just put, you know, I, I defended myself and it, it basically I'm not going to keep reading everything but to end the discussion I basically ended up saying, you know what this all this does is because we went back and forth, and finally I said, all this does is show me what I pretty much always thought. I, I knew that I didn't like you, and finally I could say it. And then she says, yeah, I kind of felt the same way about you, and then I, I include Maggie, and I said, you know what, the funny thing is, we all really know why she doesn't like me. The real reason is, is her feelings for you, Maggie. You know, I started, a bunch of people liked it, because... It's fucking true, man. Every, I mean, how it many phone odd. calls did we get? I remember getting a call from Melissa... Uh, who's uh, Melissa Ann Farley? Everybody remembers her. She is. She would sent a text message to Maggie. and says, I, "I think Aisha is a lesbian, and she doesn't want to come to terms with it because all she does. I'm I'm over here at a makeup session with her right now. All she's doing is she talking about, about how you how she loves Maggie and how so much. Well, she doesn't even know Maggie. She's met her once. Okay, and all she does is how she hates me." <laughs> Who does Cause that? that make sense? Trying to it save, was, uh, trying I, to save Maggie from your clutches. Apparently, yeah, yeah. What, but this, it which had, is funny because Melissa, she's bitching to the wrong people. Yeah. Melissa loves me. Me and Melissa are are square. Even though she's not on the show anymore, she had you know personal reasons why she had to leave. But you know, she, I I'm know Melissa her. loves me. Uh, Dan, I, she, I'm sure she's bitched to Dan. Dan, him, and I don't have any problems. So she's bitching to all the wrong people. Even her boyfriend said. You need to relax and chill out to Maggie because all she ever did was talk about me at some lunch, some lunch, uh, what a lunch, uh, it was a, a lunch my, appointment. No, it was, uh, well, it was, yeah, they had lunch because yeah. she had to return her makeup, but yeah, it what, had nothing to do with radio, nothing business. It was personal bi- shit. And she went and bitched about you to her. And I had a few people jump on board and defend me. I, I, I think I had someone also, which is what I like. I like when the people that listen to the shows like defend me and somebody wrote on, uh, on also on Stitcher, Stitcher asking me who this Aisha girl was I, and she hasn't replied yet she wants to know if uh, it's that she Aisha. noticed uh, Aisha she's all is this the Aisha that was on your show and I said I just put yep so and she hasn't responded yet so I don't know if she wants to say something or or what oh no here here it is she, she did respond hold on uh, she says Michael I was going to rip her a new one that's okay Piper Knight writes Michael is going to rip her a new one but I won't I don't want to start any more drama for you so I'm like all right so people take it. I'm like I'm glad, I'm glad that some of our listeners are uh, defensive of me. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, listeners, don't pull an Aisha. Yeah. I'm surprised that I, <laughs> Hashtag don't pull I'm an surprised Aisha. That Aisha yeah. was even following your post. Yeah, I'm that, like, that listen, was the whole thing. That about... was the whole thing, and I even said like, listen, I'm like, I'm like, what, you never comment, you never like anything. Why are you even commenting now just to talk shit? Unfriend me, like, well, Ma- and I said Maggie unfriended you because she doesn't yeah. like you. Why don't you unfriend me? <laughs> well, and I don't she, think she ever knew Maggie yeah. unfriended because your posts are public. Are they? I don't wow. know. Maggie's <laughs> to unfriend somebody but, too. That's 
but she Fair she's enough. like well you could have done it i'm like bitch you just said that you don't like bitch. it you, you could have said it you could use the unf- unfriend button be careful it could be like a single white female sort of oh moment, my god you know, like... she does know where i live <laughs> but <laughs> no move. but she can she could have used the unfriend button there was no fucking reason that she did that there's to make a long it's, story short, yeah. I mean, you know, she was uh, the only, dr- I wouldn't even call it drama because it ended before it started. Like she, she said she was going to go back to school and she said, hey, do you think we can change the recording date, you know, to another day? Because I'm going to go back to school and I'm going to be busy Tuesdays. And when she said that, be- I, had a, reason, that I had a reason to get rid of her without being unprofessional. And I just said, no, don't worry about it. We need to stay on Tuesdays because that's how my schedule is set. So, you know, by, uh, you know, Godspeed. I have, have great adventures. And I wish you the best with you know passing college with your with your unintelligence. I should say it was makeup school. And so you told oh, me. was it? Yeah. Oh, she went to makeup school. Makeup school. Uh, Tony and Guy University. That's hair cutting. Hair. It's all the same. So you now have something to hold on. Ryan says thanks a lot, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for. Uh, well, Ryan already apologized. We had a no. show that night, and Ryan came yeah. in here. He's all, dude. He's all, he, he, felt, had no he didn't even idea. want to look at me. He didn't want, he's all like, dude. Uh, he <laughs> felt bad. He's all like, dude, can we do like So we talked about it and like got it out there. And like, dude, just it, whatever, man. It was, it was waiting to happen. It was just waiting to happen. So, and I feel bad because that's the only person Dan has that could, that he's like, because he's doing this whole makeup thing. I'm going to paint your body. And she's the only girl that says, I'll, I'll do it. Oh, really? I'll do it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. She just wants the attention. Exactly. Um, so anyways, the Seahawks um, wide receiver Doug Baldwin appears to mimic pooping during the <laughs> Super Bowl touchdown celebration. Now, this, Tony, is another reason why. I, I don't remember. I, people say, why don't you like the Super Bowl? Why don't you like the Super Bowl? I think the Super Bowl, I think the NFL has, is the biggest victim of the PC police. Like, it's been, the show has been stripped of its raw, gritty nature in a lot of ways. Be, I mean, I was watching, okay, I don't watch football because of this, because of all the PC uh, agendas of the NFL trying to prove this and prove that. We saw that this past year alone, how much they're trying to do. Now, when did they start, when did they start with referees uh, taking quarterbacks out if the referee thinks he's got hit too hard? When did they start doing that? You mean uh, protecting the quarterback? Yeah. yeah, when did they start doing that? And that's fucking <laughs> pussy. Well, for, some, for a lot of people in the NFL, the, they look at the NFL as a quarterback league. In other words, all the stars, all the, all the big names, they're all quarterbacks. So part of it is you got to protect your product. You got to protect the quarterback. So it's a business. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's on the, on the, on the, you know, on the, and I understand the, the facing I, side. I understand you know. it's a business, but guess what? If Joe Schmo from the other team tackles the quarterback and takes him out of the game, that is the sport. Yeah. But no, we're going to protect the quarterback now. Yeah, that's, oh, you know what? We're going to take you out of the game because we think you might have got hit too hard. That's the this un- is fu- it's fucking football. That's the official sort of statement that we got to protect guys like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Tom Brady who uh, Russell Wilson. We got to protect these guys said. because they're because the, they all have agents and managers now, and, and they, they're, 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 they're the pansies. Faces. They're the faces of the franchise. They're the faces of the franchise. You know, everything's around the quarterback. But you know, like they they make it sound like it's for health reasons we're trying to make sure that these guys don't get killed in the field but it's really a business decision and to be fair i do know you know in the last few years they are trying to take more the nfl is being sued yeah by players because Concussion. the because they, they have they're having awesome. brain issues and yes. brain damage yes. but i'm like listen dude i'm like you should have known i'm sorry but like it. Football's been around for how many years? Uh, it's been, I'm like, it's and, you're ta- and you are—they played with leather helmets back then. Yeah, I'm like, Ch- <laughs> listen, you guys have known the damage that you volunteer, you voluntarily, it's like boxing, you voluntarily go into a line of work where you put your your life in the hands of other players because you're being hit, and now you are. I, I don't, I don't agree with that. Now you're going to sue your employer because. You, you're being hit. Common sense, common sense, key word today, will dictate that if you get hit enough times, you're going to get hurt. I mean, we all saw Rocky, right? I mean, he had to quit, <laughs> he had to quit boxing because he got hit too many times. So I, I think that whole fiasco, and I, and I get it, the lawsuits are hurting the sport. There's no. so much happening now from all angles. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason why I don't watch the NFL anymore. It's not because I don't like the sport. I do. 
but I think the sport has become has been been so commercialized. Just basically what you just said as well, how they're protecting these quarterbacks. I think the sport has be, has become more so commercialized that's actually damaging the sport in every way. Oh, look, it's so and so. You know, yelled at his wife once. Oh, we got to suspend him for you know two months. You know, so and so smacked his kid the wrong way, and we society decide we didn't like it. Guess what? We're going to now infiltrate your family life as well, your personal life. Yep. Okay, which again, I don't agree with that guy hitting his kid. However, I don't think an employer should ever dictate what a guy does in his home. It should be the police. Our legal systems should go after the guy who beat his kid, not the NFL. You are the employer. You imagine if your employer went to your house and said, hey, I don't like the way you're hitting your kid, Tony. You know what? You're going to have to take a few months off and you're suspended with no pay. Bullshit. Yeah. But because it's a business and it's all about having a happy face. Yeah. It's you see the NFL now going in and doing all these precautions, and it's everything is just from all angles. As I was saying, is damaging the sport, and it comes full circle because then again, that's why thirty second commercials are five million dollars a piece during the Super Bowl. Yeah, Ugh. and and this is why another thing that infuriates me is how the Seahawks guy, you're not even allowed to celebrate anymore. Yeah, they took, they, 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 so they, they, they took that away. They yeah. took, they, I mean, how can you take away excessive celebrating? You can't, that, that was <laughs> yeah. the name of the, the penalty, right? Yeah, excessive yeah. penalty. Ex- excessive what? Celebrating, I think. Or? Excessive, excessive celebrating. Celebration. Yeah. Excessive celebrating. I don't know. Guess what, NFL? You're, you, 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 this is the Super Bowl. It's unsportsmanlike it's conduct. And, and you guys, really? Yeah, unsportsmanlike conduct. Holy fuck! Oh, okay, that's what. It, yeah. Oh my god! It's because you, you know, everyone, you don't want to make the other team feel bad. That's why. Really? I'm sure. Just I'm give sure. everyone a fucking trophy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I gotta admit, what uh, Doug Baldwin did was funny. I was like, <laughs> I didn't even catch that. I didn't even realize well, that that's what he was most doing. Most people did it. No, most people did because according to, I guess, the NBC affiliates, they all moved their cameras. Yeah. The opposite direction. Mm. As soon as he did that, and like a lot of people didn't, w- was wondering, well, why was there a penalty? You know, and yeah, what did what he do? Wondering. And all, all he did was drop a football between his legs and, and squat, squat to look like he was pooping <laughs> out the football. That's funny. That is funny. Is that's funny. that's a that's, hell that's shit. That's a hell. Literally, that's a hell of a lot more entertaining than Katy Perry on top of a gay looking dragon. It was oh, a no lion. Way. It was a lion. lion. Was it a lion? lion. No, I thought she was on a drag scene. That's, that's how terrible it was. <laughs> and and you know what? This isn't as bad for for some people as you know, like last couple of games. Marshawn Lynch when he's scoring a touchdown, he's grabbing his crotch. Oh yeah. You know, so it's like that sort <laughs> hey, of. Guess deal. what? Michael Jackson grabs his crotch. <laughs> And grabs no, little that's boys. Why, that's why. Aww. That's why some people say the NFL is the no fun league. It, it really is, man. Oh, yeah, it's and, and, and I'm really invested the, into the NHL. I watch a lot of hockey, and mm-hmm. you know what? That sport is. And I've said this before. That sport is the last great sport that has not been infringed upon with the PC pussified. police and pussified. In fact, they tried to do it about I want to say ten years ago. Remember, they tried to stop fighting by basically the cameras. Would, le- would they would they there was people bitching that kids are watching the hockey players punch each other so for i think two or three seasons the cameras would go to the audience when you and, and, and the viewers at home oh, could not watch the fights and i'm like that's stupid, r- stupid. that's the that's sport part of the game there's an actual rule where you can fight in hockey and tell the other player the referee won't get in the way and tell one of the players fall once the other player falls then they stop the fight and then of course there's a penalty because you're fighting and you're so, talking about a sport that at one time, some of the players didn't wear helmets. Oh, can you imagine that puck flying that at is, you, man? That, and, you know, even the goalies. Scared back to death. Then, ba- back then, the goalies, there was a time where the goalies didn't even bother wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. Oh, can you imagine that being a goalie? Ouch, no. That thing way. flying at you? <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, like, I don't know if, uh, I think it's mandatory now in the NHL to have helmets, but... There was a time where, you know, like, hey, that guy doesn't have a helmet, you know, like skating around and having that puck going at you at like 80, 90, 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. That was the fun part. That was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Look at you. Violent. (laughs) So violent. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, there you go. We almost made it 30 minutes. Without you talking about fisting, but it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was it was Maggie. Maggie was the one that brought it up. Sorry. So, um, all right. So then we have a. What was the player? I can't, I, just, I forgot to put it in the show notes. Now there's a player that was arrested in Phoenix for soliciting Warren prostitutes. Sepp. Warren Sepp. He was an ex. He's retired. He's a yep. Hall of Fame. And they fired him off of was it Fox or NBC? No, the NFL Network. NFL yep. Network fired him. As He's soon a as Hall they of got Famer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh-oh. I mean, listen, these players, and this is another thing about the NFL. This is just the NFL bitch hour, I guess, because <laughs> that's another thing with the NFL is like you have all these just punk. They're just all punk asses, man, in the sport. They're always, I mean, like what, five years ago, that one guy from Colorado shot up his neighborhood. Remember? Like there's a whole, like he, he went to keep it real. I'm going to go keep it real and hang out in the hood. You're a Super Bowl uh, champion. There's no reason to keep it real anymore. Guess what? Once you put that ring on your finger, there's no reason to keep no, it once real you make no the more. First million. <laughs> Did you hear? Yeah. As <laughs> soon as you sign on the dotted line, guess what? Don't keep it real no more because you'll make it tons of millions of dollars. Did you hear the details on Warren Sapp? It was like yeah. two hookers. Uh huh. He was, two hookers he was at hunting. the Renaissance. That's a party. At the Renaissance. And apparently he was slapping them around in yeah. the hallway. Listen, you know, you know what? With all these issues and these legal issues that's happening with these players in the NFL, I think we, 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 worry, we worry so much about what happens on the, play, on, the, on the field with the NFL, <laughs> right? And the referees are like, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Like, we need to set up a system in place for these dumb players who constantly get themselves in trouble where referees just follow them around in their regular day life. And, and yeah, I think it's a good idea. And every time, you know, like for example, perfect scenario, case in point right here. Warren Sapp, imagine... If he had a referee attached to him, and he started thinking the thoughts of, I'm going to get a prostitute. Guess what? Referee all of a sudden goes in there, blows the whistle, throws the flag, five yards, repeat your, your last thought. It'll don't don't like, do it. Yeah, no, come no, on. Like it would fan, work. A fan comes out, throws the yellow flag, it says, illegal contact, five uh. yards. Yeah. Hey, no smacking your wife. I mean, <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> holding, 10 yards. Yeah. I mean, repeat first down. And, and even if you think they're going to do something, like, like, okay, next time that one dude, um, Goes in the elevator with his wife. Just have a referee standing in there, just in case. Every soon, elevator yeah, they go in? And just do a warning flag. <laughs> Illegal contact on the wide receiver. Five yards. Oh, repeat Jesus. second down. Yeah. What's a good scenario, Tony? Like, what, like, give me a good scenario here. Let me see. Like, uh, what do you mean? Like, what I mean, like, okay, you're, you're think. whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Referees are in, the, in here right now in the studio. Two minute warning. Yeah. So, I mean, don't you think that would solve the legal issues with the NFL? See, that would be worth putting money into get get them all like a life referee yeah and all these dummies who didn't graduate college or graduated college because they're an exceptional athlete just have a referee follow them around and you'll you'll solve all your problems i would love for a day for a referee to follow me what would happen (laughs) yeah like uh like uh Uh, you're scared you scare me tony what if i do something if i do something wrong at work as ah illegal contact (laughs) like what would you do at work i cannot picture you doing anything wrong (laughs) False start, false start, false start on the computer developer right here. Yeah, Tony. Off sides. <laughs> what, what if Tony was like contemplating possibly looking at porn at work? You're looking oh. around like hey, nobody's okay, there. Yeah, okay, and all of a sudden you see a, re- a referee that. just pops up. Illegal contact. <laughs> five yards. <laughs> that would work. Tell me that isn't a genius would, idea. Yeah. I should be the NFL commissioner. Don't you think, Kaylee? Yeah. I sh- that, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I yeah. should be running that business. There you go. Instead of doing radio. Instead of a life coach, a life referee. Yes. Yeah, actually, quite a handful of them do have life coaches, though. Yeah. But uh, you don't see those it. Those coaches really should be fired. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Send them to the same prison that Sandusky's in. Aw. <laughs> no showers. See, look, look, what if Sandusky had a life referee? Every time you want to do a body surf with one of those 12-year-old little boys in the bathrooms, <laughs> guess what? Pass interference. 15 <laughs> yards. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! I, you know what? Let's take it up a notch. I would say everybody should have a Michael Jackson. If he had a life referee, he, every time he thought about doing the propopol, guess what? Or touching a kid afterwards? Personal, How do you know he did? Personal it? foul, fifteen <laughs> yards, illegal contact. I think he would say would save a world of hurt for everybody. Everybody would just be a better. It would be a better place if we had little. You know, Jiminy Cricket. Basically, mm-hmm. it's him. Just no one. We can't rely on people having common sense, right? Or having a conscience, or having like a moral code. So guess what? Just have someone, not someone to impose. We don't want anybody militant. Just somebody like that would give you that second thought. You know, you get a penalty. You have to pay me five bucks. You know, repeat your last thought. You know, I think it'd be great. Uh, you know what? On that note, we're gonna do a quick break, and we'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Can you have a proper wedding world? Oh, Bobo! Bobo! Gonna take you down to the house tonight. Gonna show her my world. Oh, Bobo! And now, the world.
worst singer in the entire universe. Oh, that's good stuff. The Rain Man Show. Calling it like we see it. Yeah. 49% Check, check, check. One, two. All right. Hotel Watchdog. All right. So, Hotel Watchdog. They analyze millions of details to find the very best hotels for you. How do they get you the best bang for your buck? Well, they've made the hunt for hotels much easier by doing the hard work for you. And here's exactly what they do. They analyze prices and values to save you money. They look for hotels that are lower prices than similar hotels nearby. And they only offer you hotels that have earned high scores from TripAdvisor travelers. Uh, also, to make this even better, they combine all these details into one amazing list. Instead of hunting through hundreds of listings, you can now choose your hotel from the best of the best and save both time and money. That's Hotel Watchdog. So when you're planning your next trip, let them do the work for you. Go to RainManWasHere.com and click on the Hotel Watchdog banner. The universe of Rain Man never stops. Bookmark RainManWasHere.com slash channel 1 Listen to the current week's show on replay anytime on the 24-hour channel. Rain Man Channel 001. I'm just saying. The Jesus gorilla. Christ. You must follow us to the diamond mines. <laughs> Tim Curry. Yeah, but they're, 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 they're seven inches. <laughs> and hold on, hold on. The average condom length is seven inches. Okay. So, so the average length of a man over there is what? Well, in the Congo, it's seven inches. Let me find out what Ugandan. Okay, now you got to remember: is this flaccid? That's Are what these? I was is this, ask. No, this is hard. Okay, this is hard. Well, what did now, you now find you that do. Information? You, oh. <laughs> you need to share it with. Uh, you need to share it with Mickey. Well, you guys want to know the hard truth about penis size around the world? <laughs> Tell us the hard truth, yeah. Brian. I want the hard truth on dick size. If you know it, you can take my meaning, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Smith thrusts himself into facts. <laughs> <laughs> right, with nightly news. God damn it, it's in centimeters. I can't read this shit. Giving it to us straight and hard. Google a conversion system. You can find the length of hard dicks all across the world, and you can't convert centimeters to inches. Relive your favorite moments with shows from the archives and be entertained. You didn't know this, dude? No, yeah. I love Rodriguez. And he's, mm-hmm. She's putting fucking Lady Gaga. Film, I think she's going to do it. Scenes are already filmed, dude. Mm-hmm. They put out the, the movie poster's been out all over the net for what a week. All right, g- g- give me some music. Give me some music. What kind of music? Do you I want? need some music. What? Lady Gaga music. Oh, Jesus. And give me an echo, too. <laughs> We're going to try this again? Yes, I need an echo. I got it. Hello. Hello. Hello, my little monsters. Don't yell, though. I have just been cast. In a movie by the director of movies such as El Mariachi, Desperado, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, that movie with Frodo and Usher that made no sense. What? So, I don't know, Lady Gaga, go dress in an egg suit. Is she going to dress as an egg suit and Mache's going to stab the shit out of her and serve her up as an omelet? I hope. <laughs> Bookmark RainmanWasHere.com slash Rainman Channel 001. You're listening to the all new Rainman 001 on Rainman Digital. Back Rain Man Show, Rain Man Digital. If you ever miss any part of our show, you can always uh, go to RainManWasHere.com as well as Stitcher Smart Radio on iTunes. Just search Rain Man Digital. We also have the new app, Tony. 
That's available uh, in the Google Play Store. So if you have an Android-based phone, you can now search Rain Man Digital and take the entire network on the go, whether it be our 24-7 uh, channel that plays nonstop Rain Man show, including other content. Um, also, it has the, the Supernatural, The Crossroads, Weird West Radio, Star Wars from the Back to Tank, and uh, Critique Revolve, which is our movie review show. So it has all shows. The entire network is now on this app. Hopefully, we'll have it ready to go on uh, on iTunes. Hopefully soon. Cool. As I said before, iTunes is a, is a little bit tougher to get in, and it costs a lot more money. So I've been trying to budget things out to see when we can, you know, put that on there. So we got to bring in more money on this on this network. You gotta. We're in the red, Tony. Gotta get, gotta get paid. We're in the red. Gotta I, get paid. I looked back and saw how much money we're putting into the, the show, though. So I mean, we're making. We're drizzling. Money is slowly we're coming get paid. in. We're gonna get paid. I know. Get paid. <laughs> get paid. <laughs> It'll happen. It'll happen. <laughs> Especially with hopefully these plans that I have for this year, I think we'll end up paying off. So I think Kaylee came in at the right time. Oh yeah. Hopefully she stays. Doesn't try to bail. Well, remember, I don't like you. I'm That's in true. love with Maggie. Oh. Oh. Aisha. Sorry. Aisha part two. Uh. As long as you guys scissor beforehand, that's fine. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Five yard penalty. We no uh, think last thought. <laughs> Offside. <laughs> oh, man. So, all right. Well, we have a, a Florida man. Oh, this is Florida. Hold oh. on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I got something here. Better. I don't know. Let me see. What the fuck is this madness? Madness. Hell, this is All Florida. Right. So <laughs> fucked up Florida is at it again. Uh, this time we have a man, a Florida man, very brilliant man. Scared from Florida. Uh, from Florida. <laughs> I'm waiting for the, the 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 topic to pop up here. Okay, Florida man Accident. accidentally shoots and kills teen while acting out a Waka Flocka Flame rap song. <laughs> oh uh, Jesus! <laughs> yeah. So the man was doing the rap song, or the they team? both were. They were oh. friends. They, they were friends. I'll read the article, but they were friends, and he's just acting out the song, and he decides to pick up his gun, a loaded gun, and act out the shooting scene, and blows the guy's head off, basically, because the song told them <laughs> to do so. Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> well, just looking at him too, you know. I mean, wh- I'm too wh- surprising. It really isn't. <laughs> but it's Florida. Yeah, and <laughs> he's got street cred. Instant street cred. Oh. <laughs> Florida street cred. <laughs> That doesn't mean much in Florida. So what you in here for? <laughs> I shot my friend by accident while I was listening to Waka Flocka. I'm real gangster. <laughs> Man, you got real street cred now. <laughs> I think you need to hear a penalty. <laughs> right when you see it, it would have worked. Right when he picked up that gun, <laughs> and he, if he had that whistle, it would have worked. Uh, so, all right. So a Florida man accidentally shot and killed his friend while they acted out a Waka Flocka flame song together. Officer said uh, Rodney Patrick Jr. 22 was charged with manslaughter after he fatally shot his girlfriend's little brother. Oh, he, he won't be getting laid worst. tonight. He will not be getting laid. <laughs> He's be getting any. Baby, I love you still. That's, <laughs> give me some head still for reals. Can we can we overlook this? Can we overlook this? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get past this. <laughs> Let's get past this. Her brother's dead. Uh, 17-year-old Douglas Winslow on Monday uh, and then told investigators a story that they believed to be false. Uh, so officers said the two were inside Patrick Merritt's island home listening to Boston Adam by rapper Waka Flocka Flame. You know, I got to look the song up. Okay, I, I was going to say. Are, 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 I was going to ask you, well, what, what's the song? Maybe. Yeah. Hopefully it won't make us do this. Stand. I'm going to, I'm going to maybe be the deciding factor here. You know, we'll go around the room and see if this instills uh, like a need to just pick up a gun and start. Plat, 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 you plat, never know. Plat, plat, it just happens. You know, there's only one a song. Secret message. There's one song that I know of that would make me do that. That's de- but I'm first. Hold on. Waka. Flocka. How do you one spell song Flocka? at a time. Florence. L.A. Shoot em? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Or, what is it called? Shoot him? Shoot at him or shoot? Bust him. at him. Bust him. at him. At him. That's such M. a smart <laughs> name. It's, it's pronounced bust him. That hurts my head. Bust him. Bust him. It's man. such a clever bustin name. Adam. No. Bust him. at him. We're busting at him, man. Up right, and at him. <laughs> 
Yep, okay. okay. I'm urging someone. Right now. That makes me want to go ahead yep. and like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh, that is some gangster shit. Yeah, if I was drinking or I was high, I might be like... You know, you yeah. got a gun, it's like pow, 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 so... But listen, what You happened? didn't know it was loaded. What happened to the good old days of just, like, picking up your finger and maybe, like, doing... Is that not gangster? No. Like, that's not using... No, you need a real... Real gun? A real yeah. gat? Yeah. There you go. Need to show your gat to the to the, to the crew. Kaylee, you like to booty dance in the club. Would you booty dance with that? Would you like? I would so get down with this. <laughs> and then I would shoot at the club. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go. You know, booty dancing, but then you take out the guns, and they say, "I got this. I got street cred, motherfuckers." <laughs> Who's cred. down with me? <laughs> Who is with me and my my posse? <laughs> you part of my crew? Are you part of my crew? Tony, simmer down. Oh my god! Tony's getting gangster over there. Are you part of my crew? Dude, listen. Like, oh, hold on a second. Bitch, I'm buzzing Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think this instills uh, me wanting to pick up a gun. I don't know. I mean, the song includes the lines. What does it say? Pow, pow. How about shoot first, ask questions last? Are you, re- are you reading the lyrics? Well, it's on the article. You thug yo own brains. I just, uh, hold <laughs> on. Let me, let me the get. song makes me want to blow my brains out. <laughs> you thug yo own brains. You thug yo What's it brains. called when it's ju- no lyrics? It's just the, what's the name? I can't think of it. It's just the track. L- no lyrics, basically. I'm going to have Kaylee read the lyrics. <laughs> No, not read. <laughs> rap. Oh, yes. Got to show some street cred for the homies. Oh, I forgot about my street cred. <laughs> on here, Pour a 20 down for all the past okay, all dead homies. Instrumental. Instrumental. That's the word. Instrumental. Yeah. Okay, here's just the <laughs> instrumental version. Yeah. All right, Kaylee, read us those lyrics real fast. <laughs> Shoot first. <laughs> Ask questions last. Yeah. I don't know. You suck your own brains. Let me make your deathbed. Suicide shoddy. <laughs> you, you watch. You're a mute. You're an MTV girl, weren't you? Yes. How does she know that? Ooh, yeah. Don't be telling us <laughs> Shot his Word. own self, Red. Go ahead. Do it. <laughs> Suicide shoddy. Shot his own self, Red. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> You're a little gangster. I know. I should make a career of it. Mm. <laughs> That's so funny. All That's right. That's all I got here, though. So I would think that you look, the first thing you learn, though, when you, again, these kids are probably probably didn't have a permit. Probably wasn't really his gun. But, I mean, that's just the thing you learn immediately is you don't point a gun, whether it's loaded or unloaded. You don't point a gun, period, at someone's head or <laughs> at someone in general. You know, well, not my, even on set, actually. Yeah, yeah even on. You're right. Even on. You know, the and those filming, are those are supposed to be quote unquote. You know, fake. Right. Yeah, I remember when you were when we were doing when we were shooting, Kaylee. You uh, like on the roof. The, the whole thing was like everyone pointed the gun like this, like limp wrist. Like yeah, I were, remember I got yelled at yeah. when I was on the roof, and everybody else was three stories down, and everyone was telling me not to point in the direction of people. I'm pointing <laughs> at the ground, guys. I'm pointing <laughs> at the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, um, so this Florida man, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't see it. So anyways, all right, so next thing is Chris Pratt. This was sent to me by a, by a listener as well, which I already, come on, it was news, I already heard about it. <laughs> Chris Pratt is being uh, looked at to play Indiana Jones. I didn't even know they were going to, are they remaking? They're remaking, it, they want to reboot Why? it. Yeah, I know. Oh, stop I know. rebooting things. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Now, if they want to make another movie, and see, this is—I said I pleaded this case to someone that doesn't matter. But I mean, if there was somebody had it, like in Hollywood had had I had an ear to someone in Hollywood that made decisions, then it would matter. But so this is the thing. First off, you—the problem with Hollywood is that they immediately grasp at the flavor of the month. Chris Pratt is 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 a, is a trend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is not a proven box office success like Harrison Ford. So, it, I mean, yes, Harrison Ford at the time Indiana Jones was out, it, he was just a, a, a he was just another actor. Yes, he came off the success of of uh, of uh, Star Wars 
and I believe Blade Runner as well at that mm-hmm. time. But it, he wasn't a household name yet necessarily. He wasn't the mega house that, name that he is today. And if you're going to reboot a major series like that, you need to either A, put an, an unknown actor who's good, okay, which would be more acceptable because you don't want to see Chris Pratt and think, oh, that's Chris Pratt. You want to watch Indiana Jones and think, oh, it's Indiana Jones. And mm-hmm. if you put an actor like Chris Pratt to play Indiana Jones, whether he's genius at the role or not, what are you always going to think? Oh, it's Chris Pratt. It's, it's like casting a famous person to play Superman. Why don't they do that? So you want- Why don't they cast someone like Nicolas Cage? Not because he's a terrible actor nowadays, but just period. Why don't you put a known <laughs> face into that role? You don't do it for a reason because you're going to look at that person and you're going to think, oh, that's so-and-so. So it's going to be issue- very It's a believability. It's going to be very hard to digest it when you're seeing him on screen. Mm-hmm. So probably the big biggest issue with Chris Pratt is that he really doesn't have enough on his resume or under his belt to merit such a role? If you're going to... Re- the thing is, is that this is a major franchise. And if yes. you're going to cast him in a major franchise, you can't expect to put the flavor of the month in a major franchise because he happens to be a hot topic right now. That's he might a lot right of pressure. Now. That is right. a lot of pressure. And, and yeah. this could either ruin his career, okay, one, or he could... It, it could suck forever. And now we have a terrible Indiana Jones movie that we have to accept as Indiana Jones forever you know, I just think it's a, it's stupid. It's either put an unknown person in there if you want to reboot it, or do it the smart way and keep Harrison Ford in it and make it what they were trying to do with, Sh- with Shia LaDouche, like what they were trying <laughs> to do with him, When which, by the way, I, I like him. I think he's a pretty good actor. I just think that whole Transformer thing and him being really like the a heartthrob kind of hurt him, mm-hmm. but he's a really good actor. But oh, yeah, he is. I think, okay. what, I think what they did was was smart the idea was originally was to hand the torch off to him that was what they wanted to do and i think they shouldn't change their plan i think they should still do that but maybe not to shia labeouf maybe introduce some other character in the world of indiana jones and make it two separate franchises make it indiana jones-esque but almost like a spin-off tv series would you know how you'd you you would you'd spin off a tv show so you'd spin off a movie mm-hmm. introduce this person who's not indiana jones but he's a badass archaeologist who happens to like, let's say he, he meets up with Indy somehow in this movie. I'm not writing this movie right now because it sounds like a horrible idea. <laughs> but you get where I'm coming from. Introduce him somehow, make him be successful, and then hand the story to him. But he's not Indiana Jones. That would be awesome. And then, and, and then you can call it you know, the Chronicles of Indiana Jones if you want to keep that name on there for whatever reason. But don't actually recast Harrison Ford. There's, he's too iconic. And the movie, there was a movie that just came out four years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a bad idea. I really do. There's going to be a lot of expectations, really, if he, uh, regardless on who decides to, if they decide to recast Indiana Jones, because you're, no matter what, you're always going to be compared to Harrison Ford. Yeah. Gosh, just don't reboot it. Yeah. (sighs) I know. Um, Well, it's the same thing with, uh, well, someone said, well, he's a big box office name. I'm like, he's had one movie. He had Guardians of the Galaxy, which wasn't even good because of him. Let's be honest. Well, he had, he also had, what is it? Take Me Home Tonight. I was, I actually, what was that? I was in that with him. Really? Uh-huh. Look at you. That was, that was filmed here before Western X or anything, actually. Really? Was it a but, big movie? Was he? Yeah, a, it has like Anna Ferris in it and Topher Grace. And Look at you. Paolo. <laughs> Six Degrees. <laughs> it's now, we, we need to play now Six Degrees of Separation with Kaylee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not going to make myself look big. I had like a little tiny itty bitty roll in you. Probably could point me out somewhere in there wearing a bright purple dress and big poopy hair. Uh, you, um, yeah, so Chris Pratt, I don't mind Chris Pratt. Actually, honestly, people think I have this hatred towards him. I just, I don't believe that just be, he has a hot movie last year. A, a big a movie that actually made him a household name. He lost weight. Oh, yay. Now he's hot according because he lost weight. And he's in Jurassic World. He, and now he's going to be in this new Jurassic movie, which isn't even tracking well, meaning it's a lot of people are already thinking it looks cheesy. It's, it's yeah. SeaWorld with Jurassic, <laughs> with, with dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Does yeah. anybody, who, what's wrong with these Hollywood execs? Like, hey, guys, let's make the new Jurassic Park movie. Okay. Instead of saying, let's go back to the basics. Well, what's your ideas, guys? Let's write the hell out of this. I'm thinking SeaWorld with dinosaurs. <laughs> Brilliant. And we put Chris Pratt in it. Oh, that's it. I guarantee you that's exactly how it went. I guarantee you when they pitched it, Chris, think Chris Pratt yep. meets <laughs> Jurassic Park dinosaurs. meets. No, no, no. It's Parks and Rec yeah. meets the dinosaurs. 
<laughs> meets Archer. Isn't he also the voice of Archer? Is he? Really? I yeah, I believe that. so. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. That's something so, I didn't know. I, I just think it's dangerous to do things like that. Yeah. Well, because didn't Star Wars, uh, the first the first episode or the third or the fourth, whatever, uh, almost ruin, what's her name? Natalie Portman's yeah. career, too. Yeah. And she was she was yeah. pretty well known. And she was a well-known actor before yeah. before that movie came out. She even whatever admitted it, I think, to, recently. And whatever happened to Hayden Christensen? Oh. <laughs> Look at you with your <laughs> smirk on your face. <laughs> Anakin. I think, I think everybody, when they got cast in that movie, would have benefited from... Uh, not being cast. P- possibly <laughs> would have benefited from... You know, they probably should. Oh, I had the other music on too. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah. Fifteen yards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when Liam Neeson was uh, was uh, reading the script, he needed that coach, that referee, just to whistle. <laughs> I'm looking forward to take it four. No, so not really. <laughs> so dumb. Um, Five yard penalty. <laughs> oh man. Um. Let's see here. Also, what are we doing here? No, the Oscars. You guys looking forward to the Oscars this year? No. Uh, Always looking forward to the Oscars. Yeah. Even though it's an all white Oscars. What? It's all white Oscars. It's racist. There's no black people in there. It's racist. We're <laughs> evening it out because last year was twelve years a slave. Come on. It's yeah. like, okay, they've had their moment. Let's move let's uh let's give it to the honkies. Oh <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's honky town. Come on, let's go. Is this according to what's his name? Uh, Neil. Neil Patrick no, Harris. he he made a joke. Neil Patrick Harris made a joke about it being an all white Oscars because that's what um the when the Oscar nominations came out a couple weeks ago, you know people that like to stir up racist j- racism basically started complaining that there's no black people that would be nom- nominated. Because so, it's so they started every year. so that, yeah it's mandatory because you know let let's put every let's put now let's put what's it called um we talked about this a couple few weeks ago the um, summer. No, what's the what's it called when jobs make you do something? I can't, you hire people. I can't oh, think of the oh, name. Oh, affirmative action. Affirm, yeah, let's put affirmative action into Oscar ceremonies because that that's fair. Yeah, hey, never mind. Never mind about talent. Never mind. No, no, it's not about talent. It's about do we have enough diversity? Oh, yeah. listen, you know we don't have enough Mexicans this year, so I think we better Indians bu- and Asians. Yeah, I think we better bypass this guy here who's exceptional because we need to make it fair. It's not about being fair. It's about awarding excellence. In this craft, and if it happens not to have some black folk in there or some Mexicans, so listen, I'm still waiting for my time. When is it going to be? When is when are we going to push the Mexican Irish agenda? I want a help. I want a leg up. <laughs> what about me, the Filipino? Yeah, you, you guys, know, I, I'm tired of getting the technical awards. You guys have a whole island, okay? <laughs> Oscar, uh, the Oscar host Neil Patrick Harris jokes about so white nominees. Um, don't be surprised if Oscar host Neil Patrick Harris makes a few jokes about the lack of diversity among this year's nominees when he hosts the Academy Awards later this month. The MC indicates such quips were, were at the front of his mind in a tweet with a photo from Monday's Oscar nominees luncheon. He writes, where's it at? I'm blind on my glasses. Uh, bleh. okay. He put the actor captioned the image they all look so white. That's all he wrote after taking a photo of the, of the mm-hmm. nominees at this luncheon. And he put too soon in a hashtag. Hashtag too soon. I love it. Yeah. I'm glad he's speaking against it. He's, and he is. He's a comic because he is kind of a comedian. Yeah. He's a funny individual. And I, lo- I hope he does tackle it because it's the stupidity of it. It's it, it just dumb. And, yes. and, and I guess it happened twice in the last, where is that, 20 acting nominees this year went to a group made up entirely of white actors. Who's really the racist people? The, the people counting that? Oh my god, there's 20 white people. Mm. That, to me, that's, you're counting. I didn't even realize you're, someone is even keeping track. Can't you imagine, don't, Kaylee, you think that's a bit more racist? The person who's actually counting how many people there are of a set race. Yeah. That, that's more <laughs> offensive. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just... I'm counting, I'm counting, <laughs> I'm counting the white people in the room. That's offensive. Quick, we need we need a non-white person. Um, um, uh, George Lopez. Here we go. Hey, we're good. Yo, George Lopez is white. <laughs> so stupid. So let's see. White actors, actors, and only the second time in nearly two decades. So in twenty years, this has happened twice. Come on. Oh, but it has to happen this year when we're having all the racist issues. Right. And, and of course, you have people like Al Sharpton, who, who are the ones who are leading it. Black Lives Matter. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that sounds like a hashtag. <laughs> Don't go nowhere. The Rain Man will be right back. 
all you Android phone users out there now have a reason to rejoice. The new Rain Man digital app is now available in the Google Play Store. Simply search Rain Man Digital and download the app today for free. And now you can take the entire Rain Man Digital Network anywhere you go. Supernatural The Crossroads, The Rain Man Show, Star Wars From the Back to Tank, Critique Revolt, and Weird West Radio, all in this app. Also, we have our two 24-hour radio channels, RM001 and Crossroads003, also included in the app. So when we broadcast live, you can now listen to our live broadcast directly from this app. Go to the Google Play Store and download Rain Man Digital. Just search Rain Man Digital and start listening. All right, let's try to do this. See how the live read works. You guys can pipe in wherever. All right, so we have Roku. Many ways that you can help the Rain Man Digital Network just by clicking through those banners. We have them on all our sites on the bottom and the left corner, the right corner. Uh, best way you guys can help us out is click on the links. Right now we have Roku. Uh, you can choose from the widest selection of streaming channels with over 1,800 plus channels in the U.S. and counting. You always find something to watch. The most popular streaming channels, uh, Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon, are all available at your fingertips, Tony. All available. What do you use for streaming? I'm a, I actually bought a... Uh, Roku, Roku player. Yeah. Roku. Excellent. How do you like it? I actually like it better than Apple TV. As you know, hard to, as hard as, as impossible as that may sound. Well, Apple TV is good for a lot of reasons, but Roku is, is some more simpler. And the fact that they have so many, they have private channels as well that you can make. You know, that's a, that's, that's a good thing also because you could get some international channels. I was able to at least show my uh, mom and dad, hey, you know, you could get a channel here from the Philippines. Yeah. Which shocked me. You know, like, uh, but there's a lot, there's a lot of content, a lot of different variety. You know? A lot more. They have a lot more to offer than, uh, say, Apple TV does. So, Roku. Now, this is TV. Uh, go to RainManWasHere.com and click on our Roku banners. Thank you. This is Star Wars from the Bucket Tank Exclusive. But I said to myself, I want to go in having one, like one Star Wars nerd chill. You know, that you get. Yeah. Like when Anakin turned into Darth Vader. Or when Han Solo comes back and saves the day. That chill, that you, that moment you still get chills when yeah. you watch it. You're like, oh, you get those little goosebumps. When Lando, you know, thinks he's going to die because he's in the Death Star. And he's looking at that screen. All of a sudden he comes out. And you're like, yeah! And knee numbs. All, <laughs> you know, whatever he does. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> details and get ready for an excitingly good time also if you've missed our last show you can also find us on your stitcher app search back to take that is to your favorites thank you and we will see you very soon you're listening to the rain man show on rain man digital Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. All right, we're back. Rain Man Show, Rain Man Digital. And we're back for the very first news segment with Kaylee. Hey, Kaylee, what, what, what are we going to go by for your last name on the show, by the way? Because I know you have multiple. You have, like, so many last names. <laughs> yeah, I have, like, 20 of them. Yeah. Uh, what name do you want to go by? Kaylee Alessano? Or do you want to go by Kaylee Norris? Does it really matter to you? No, like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Do you go by Alessandro anymore? No, uh, really, huh? You know, honestly, when I moved out to California, everyone was telling me, why the heck are you using Alessandro when your last name is Norris? Yeah. It's <laughs> so, a pretty cool name. Oh, uh, yeah. Made after the second greatest fighter of all time. <laughs> Trained by the first. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, here we have... Uh... <laughs> and now we're ready for news with Kaylee. Take us away. All right. 
So according to the Telegraph, Chinese teen get up and Hannah. get up in that mic. Get up in that mic. I'm up in the mic now. There you go. <laughs> So according to the Telegraph, Chinese teen chops hand off to hmm. cure internet addiction. He cuts his hand off? Yes. An huh. estimated 24 million Chinese teenagers are said to be addicted to online games. So this teen chopped his hand off to stop playing games. Huh. I guess. I, I, because they, they <laughs> apparently could type one-handed. I don't yeah, know. One, right? hand, one hand wonder. Like Everything I, I, one-handed. I, I would, with their feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, we, and we know you know the Asians pretty well. Oh, I know. <laughs> I don't know. It says a, a Chinese teenager has been rushed to hospital after... Rushed to hospital. Has been rushed to hospital instead of the hospital. Yes. I think an Asian wrote this. <laughs> um, I was going to say that. I'm not going. <laughs> After chopping off his hand in a desperate attempt to cure his addiction to the internet, there are currently blah 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 twenty four million young web junkies in China, according to some people. Uh, and, and, that's funny that that's a solution to the guy. Like the guy hated the internet. Do you think he was like, oh, it was video games? You said video games or internet? It says internet online games. Online games. Internet addiction. How about uh, he, he, here, here's a solution that doesn't involve you know mutilating your body? Get a girlfriend. There. Yeah. <laughs> or how about you cut your damn internet connection? Or that. How about you? Step away. How about, step away. Listen, Push if, away. If you have that much power to, like, cut your hand off, that much strength to do that, then you would also think you have mu- enough strength to call up your cable provider, your internet provider, be like, hey, listen, can you just disconnect me because I can't control myself? Just say no. Yeah. Oh, well, hold on a second here. Actually, it says, this is quoted by his mother, we cannot accept what has happened. It was completely out of the blue. He was a smart boy. Oh, uh, no, not smart <laughs> 19 enough. 19-year-old. <laughs> uh, yeah, chances are he wasn't too bright. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, Tony. You, you're you're Asian. Would you guys do you guys do anything stupid like that? I thought you guys were supposed to be smart. Yeah, I thought I thought so too. Well, maybe he, uh, maybe, so too. maybe he invented an awesome prosthetic, you know, that was like robotic, and that's what well, you. Really I, I look at it this way: it's a good thing it's just internet addiction. Can you imagine if it was porn addiction? And cut his penis off? Oh, oh. No, no, hell no! Oh. Hell no! <laughs> well, I guess uh, I guess actually he had uh, written her a note. His mama note. He, he said, wrote "Mom, a note. I have gone to hospital for a while." <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I will definitely come back this evening. <laughs> Jesus. I have gone to hospital for gone, a while, mother. Says. Did he cut off um, both I have hands? Gone to hospital. Did he cut off both hands or just one hand? Just one. <laughs> Did he write the note after he, he cut off the hand? His or? left hand at the wrist. Ooh. And he called the taxi to take him to a nearby emergency room. And he left the hand lying on the ground. <laughs> Jesus. No, Jesus no. Christ. Anyways. No, not, not a smart person, unfortunately. <laughs> no. One of the very few unintelligent <gasps> Chinese men out yeah. there. Very, very, you guys, you should be very ashamed. Yeah, uh, I am, uh, I disown him. Do you I date, uh, him. Kaylee, do you date Chinese men or Japanese men? Oh, no, I haven't dated any Japanese, actually. So only Chinese? Uh, a Chinese, a Taiwanese, and a Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it this way. How many white people have you dated? <laughs> Uh, let me think. Uh, zero? Uh, before 25 or after 25? <laughs> She's like keeping track like uh, the people at the Oscars. Hmm, let's see. You know? <laughs> all Asians. All Asians. <laughs> all Asians. My vagina. <laughs> so stupid. All right. Um, what else do we have in the news, Kaylee? Well, we have, according to TechCrunch.com, Uber is opening a robotics research facility in Pittsburgh mm-hmm. to build self-driving cars. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Doesn't, that, doesn't that defeat the purpose? Uh, and yeah. Tony's afraid because <laughs> he might be out of a job already. I know. How, how? By the way, Tony, how did your first week in Uber doing? Uh, I did uh, eighty bucks in an hour. Really? Are you being yeah. That's not bad. Uber? Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, but, he but started then, for but, no but reason. Again, I don't know why. Then again, well, you know, like it was uh, like yeah. there was a lot of things going on in town, and oh, you know, yeah, like uh, cool. with the Super Bowl and the Phoenix mm-hmm. Open. Did so, you? Did, did you? Celebrities? Yeah. No. <laughs> did you uh, do a Bill Cosby anybody and put them to sleep? Uh, I, I was thinking, you know, like, uh, like at first, you know, like some people were like going, uh, let me see about stepping into the car with this guy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just keep that whistle there. Yeah, exactly. All I'm right. clean. I'm clean. Look at me. I'm clean. <laughs> so, so what else does the news say? The article say about well, the robotics? Let's see, it's driver on demand service. Uber is building a robotics research lab in P- Pittsburgh. Um, Kickstarter autonomous taxi fleet development. Hmm. Um, they agreed to discuss the deal on record. They published a blog. That's interesting. Day. That's yeah. interesting that, that Uber has gone because they've had such great success with this driving thing they're doing. 
people hate them though. Uh, driving services load them. Mm. And it's kind of interesting, you know, that next step is they're getting into the robotics. So they're just going to bypass their drivers eventually and just go str- straight. I mean, that's what they're doing. Regardless. Obviously, if they want dr- cars to drive themselves, that's what they're doing. They're going to replace the drivers. Have the you key- seen these cars though? Yeah. Have you seen them? No, I haven't. They cool. kind of remind what is that? What is that movie with uh, Sylvester Stallone and Judge uh, Wesley Snipes? Oh, oh uh, Demolition Man. Demolition, Demolition Man. Man. They're, like, some ah. of them have their, or no, maybe actually even uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger's on the Mars. Total Recall. Yes. Oh, the so little tiny, tiny car. Looking. Yeah. That's awesome, Kyle. Would you, yeah. would you be, would you, uh, Kaylee, be um, comfortable getting into a robotic car, not no. being in control of it? No, because yeah. I already am a control freak anyways. Yeah. yeah. That no would way. Be cool, how, though. How, I mean, I, walking cool, in and then, but... and then the car talks to you back, goes, where do you want to go? Actually, it's kind of creepy because there's, 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 they don't even put a robot or any fake looking person yeah. or human in the driver's seat. Yeah. It's just empty. Well, yeah, what happens that's... if it's like that Stephen, you know, that Stephen King movie, Maximum Overdrive, where all of a sudden the cars all of a sudden oh. act on their own and yeah. you're trapped in one of them? <laughs> oh. So stupid. But you know what? I just, I think that we're, it's like almost like the Super Bowl thing, you know, going back to that, like, hey, I want to be sold to, sell to me, sell to me. Let me be completely mind fucked for the Super Bowl. And I want you to jam all this propaganda. It's like this, like we are voluntarily getting into a car that's being controlled by a robot. What's next? I mean, also you see McDonald's doing this now. McDonald's will be rolling out completely self-serving menus and i've used some of these menus already not at mcdonald's but other locations that use these little menus the gym has an the entire pro shop now for everything is ran by this little machine mm-hmm. and you go there you scan you pay everything it, 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 it compl- and it has cameras all over the place so you can't pocket anything so yeah. the, the the theft is going to go way down because they didn't have cameras like that before everywhere so well i think actually you're going to some- see people losing jobs i think in the end yeah, right oh, yeah definitely i mean, I mean it's, they said about 10 10 million jobs could so be, th- did they really in the yeah. Uber thing? Wow. Yeah, because I actually read that earlier today before before even, I don't know. And I guess it's something to do with the Mars rovers technology and really? all that stuff. Yeah, but I, I, I hmm. no, thank you. All you I have to do is just, I'll give it a whirl, but that's it. <laughs> all you have it. to do is just look at that movie by Will Smith, iRobot. Yeah. And yeah. the next yeah. thing you know, you wake up and the robots are doing everything for robot. you. Yeah, yeah. But that's supposed to also change our economy real it's going to affect a lot of the the, the, the lower class people aren't going to have jobs. Middle class people won't have jobs. The the, the blue collar people because the lower class already is given everything. You know, so let's let's be honest. They're given. Th- oh, you have no food. Ah, here you go. It's for free. Middle. Meanwhile, the middle class is struggling to survive, and they're going to cut our jobs now. <laughs> And then the Hunger Games start. Yeah. Hey, as long as a robot can't get behind <laughs> uh, a camera and shoot a movie or get behind a mic and talk, I'm okay with that, right? There we go. <laughs> yeah. there we go. Hey, what else do we have in the news? Well, uh, according to Huffington Post, Taylor Swift's Twitter and Instagram accounts were hacked. Hmm. But it looks like everything is going to be okay. Oh, thank uh, goodness. Oh, thank no, goodness. Oh, no. Nude Ooh. photos of Taylor Swift. Thank goodness. Uh, it looks like the 25-year-old's Twitter account was breached by some folks who took the opportunity to give themselves a couple of shout-outs. Oh, that's that's awesome. <laughs> uh, the hack tweets were deleted about 15 minutes after they were posted. So this wasn't like uh, another run of the fap. Anymore. This is like this is like the Waka Flocka flame guys. Oh, quick. Let's hack. Uh, let's <laughs> hack Taylor Swift's Twitter account and give ourselves some shout outs and promote our new mixtape. Boo. Well, actually, it looks like Word. one of the profiles was located in North Korea. <laughs> from what it so, says on my there. god it's the first of all it was like the interview now this kim, jo- kim jong-un dude he has a taylor swift flavor you know yeah, he wants he, to this guy he wants uh, her to shake it off so uh u.s <laughs> domination will begin through taylor swift oh, he calls man. himself the leader of lizard squad huh. leader of lizard squad it's not even leader of the <laughs> you know what squad. you can cool. always tell who it, uh, <laughs> the nation's typing down this stuff because yeah. they, they, they ignore the freaking prepositions <laughs> Yeah. Well, she says, my Twitter got hacked, but don't worry. Twitter is deleting the hacker tweets and locking my account until they can figure out how this happened. But no nude and photos. New passwords. So they no. they tweeted, but no nude photos of Taylor Swift. So either she's extremely smart and doesn't do photos of herself naked, or these people just didn't give a shit. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, out of all the things that were leaked, I wouldn't mind ch- checking out Taylor Swift, seeing what she looks like, out of curiosity. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I didn't even find her attractive until maybe a, a, six months ago, maybe a year. Yeah, does, I, she get, I, does she get something done? I don't know. Something like about just, before just, she was just kind of icky and countryish. Maybe I don't yeah. like young girls, so maybe that's why. <laughs> like maybe she was kind of young. Now I think she's kind of developed and she's she's ripened. She's ripened. Not just, that sounds <laughs> like a very, fine wine. Yeah, that sounds very creepy. <laughs> very <laughs> creepy. What is else? What else is in the news? Uh, let's see. Well, White House spokesman Taliban, not a terrorist group. 
Huh. Uh, that's Could've the problem. Says a White House Could've spokesman. fooled me. According uh. to Newsmax.com, an Obama White House spokesman said Wednesday that the United States may negotiate prisoner swaps with the Taliban because, unlike the Islamic State, a.k.a. ISIS, it is not considered a terrorist organization. Yeah, and this all was spawned, if, I rem- if my memory serves me. I'm, again, I'm, sp- I'm kind of just playing on memory. I-, I think they released that statement because it was pertaining to the, uh, was it Sergeant Berg- Bergdahl? Ber- Bergdahl? Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, the guy who... Yeah, Bergdahl. Uh, yeah, who, um, who uh, what's he it was called? Captured. He was captured. He, yeah. uh, he had abandoned he his post. Yeah. With- he abandoned his post, and yeah. he went wandering off and did and basically der- derelict. He was a derelict, dereliction of duty, and he left and decided mm-hmm. to leave his post, and then he got captured. And a lot of people are complaining that we spent, you know, we gave off, what, five? Five, five Taliban members for, for him, yeah. For a guy who basically abandoned his post and, you know, and no man left behind. But this guy willingly left his post and was leaving the military without without a sanctioned um, letter of uh, of uh, of dischargement. Shame so, on you. Yeah, so it, 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 I think it's, and I guess what people are complaining about is the fact that, you know, it's convenient that the White House is now saying, oh, well, the Taliban isn't a terrorist group, so therefore we can deal with them because they're not terrorists. Listen, last I checked, the Taliban housed a lot of terrorists. Let's (laughs) let's not split hairs here. Guess what? If you're an extremist Muslim, chances are you are (laughs) a terrorist. terrorist. Yeah. So that that's it. that whole entire man, the Middle East is just a a clusterfuck. Like trying to trying to get involved in the politics of the Middle East is, is a nightmare. I mean, you have ISIS, you have ISIL, you have, and then they try to say, oh, ISIS and ISIL is the Taliban, it's separate. I'm like, listen, the entire thing, if you just read and do your due diligence, you can immediately find out. First off, remember, the, and I said this before on the show, the Arab Spring, when a couple years ago, everybody was so happy, all the left, the extreme left was so happy. Oh, the Arab Spring, all the Arab people are fighting for their freedom. <laughs> Yay. Unless everybody revolt. The Egyptians, you know, everybody, Saudi Arabia. Remember when everybody was 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 uh was rioting against their against their governments? And and here in the US people were applauding them and help in fact Obama got involved with the whole Libya thing. And again, not taking sides with, with any I'm not trying to get too political here, but that whole you know what spawned ISIS and ISIL, this government group? That this organization, all they are is the remnants of this rebellion that we wanted. The, the Arab Spring created all these rebellious people, these groups, these organizations that fought against the government. Now they spawn into ISIS and ISIL. So we have rebellious terrorists now being called ISIS and, and want to be considered a legitimate government that's taking over by the by the thousands they're taking over miles and miles and not thousands but hundreds and hundreds of miles of iraq right. they're taking up iraq all over the place you know and it's only and, and we're trying and, and and they're even the whole rumor as to why you know we are calling them isis and isil is because we already know that eventually we're going to have to give them diplomatic respect meaning we're going to have because they're taking up so much land and they're called the islamic state Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's going to happen? You, you're going to see them coming to the table now and negotiating with these people, and we are accepting it because we already know that we. So it's a battle we can't win, and we, we're going to have to go ahead and deal with these people who are, you know, basically terrorists. Yeah, because they're actually they're taking pictures. Um, they have a lot of these people that they're recruiting here in America, like Americans themselves, taking pictures yeah. in front of you know historic buildings and all this stuff saying isis is here you know and <laughs> hey, listen i'm not a dip i'm not a, a militant listen I, you, again be happy i'm not the president of the united states because <laughs> you have people like this just like the thing that happened in france a few mm-hmm. weeks back the government in france knew that these individuals left the country and went to be trained and came back and mm-hmm. then came back and we do and, and we see the exact same thing happening in the u.s people leave to go get trained in a camp and then they come back if i was the president i'm like listen if you leave and we know you're being trained in a camp i don't give a shit if you're an american citizen guess what you are now deported and you're gonna go back to that camp mm-hmm. because they're not going to that camp to to learn how to tie a knot they're not Boy Scouts. They're not Middle Eastern Boy Scouts. Guess what they're learning how to do? Kill the infidel. What? If I was president, that's exactly what I'd do. Like, listen, you left. You're not coming back. And I think that's our demise in a lot of ways in this country. Our biggest flaw is that we want to play the part of, oh, we're good. Even though, yeah. we, do, even though we do a lot of horrible shit, we do. 
But then we want to play this game where, oh, we good, come back in, we because we're we accept we accept everybody. I'm like, we shouldn't accept that. I'm sorry. We if you're training in a camp, why are we accepting that? That's extremism. And people say, oh, well, you have extremists, you know, white trash rednecks in the South. And guess what? They're tagged by the government. The FBI knows exactly what they're doing. So, so maybe we should export them? Uh, fuck, <laughs> put them on an island. I don't give a shit. Get them out. Anybody that, that, that wants anybody to put... Anybody that doesn't have common sense. Yeah, anybody. Yeah. Yes. Put them all there. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What else do we have in the news? Well, according to the Huffington Post, Benedict Cumberbatch apologizes for race comments calling... What does he say? What did he say? For using the phrase colored actors. Hmm. On the Tavis Smiley PBS show, and he said he was devastated to have caused offense. What does he mean by color? Does he mean like they were like Crayola mm. colors? They're that's like, a good question. I don't know. I mean, that's just like uh, the term that they used back in the 50s oh, yeah, and 60s, right. you know, like, yeah. uh, you and know, also color, wherever, wherever, color boy, you know, like, uh, yeah, you know, like they or... separated the restrooms, the whites and the colors, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, like huh. uh, they were maybe much more bright. I wonder why he said that. Like, y- well, I mean, honestly, let's see. Oh, do you have, is there a reason yeah. why he said that? Well, they it kind of goes a little bit into it. He said, it says uh, he landed in hot water when he was asked about diversity in roles. And then he replied back saying, I think as far as colored actors go, it gets really different in the UK. And a lot of my friends have had more opportunities here in the US than in the UK. And that's something that needs to change. Something's gone wrong. About so he's saying it's different. Enough. It's different there. Yeah. yeah. Though in the UK, it's acceptable to say colored. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. He goes on to say, my, friend, not, my friends not... are colored. <laughs> They're colored. They are. Look, pink, blue, yellow, <laughs> <laughs> purple, orange, I'm a purple orange, friend. lemon, and cherry flavor. <laughs> well, he goes on to say, "We're not representative enough in our culture of different races, hmm. and that really does need to step up a pace." I, I and he think, said all this. Uh, what is, an, one anti-racist? I, I think he, he deserves a pass here because one, he's from he's from Great Britain. You know, that's <laughs> he's probably, not even from they're probably here. like uh, say colored all over the place over there. You know, yeah. I don't know. Did you, Cumberbatch cracks me up. I, I would, is there audio of him saying that? I wonder because the yeah, way he says well, things, like, did he say it like, I've been, you know, he talks like this. I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm Benedict Cumberbatch. I have nothing, you know, honestly, he's a good actor, but I don't like his face. Maybe well, he <laughs> could, maybe he could be Indiana Jones. He, I, I am Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> he talks like the people from South Park. You know, the Canadians from South Park, his mouth opens real wide like this. <laughs> because Mike, they are very articulate. The colored actors. Very they articulate. use the Queen's English. You should be, he has apologies. All, you should be happy that he I didn't use says, the N word instead. He probably says button like button. <laughs> the royals talk like this. Look at the Queen. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're not going to go down that route. The please. Queen. Oh, God. <laughs> why, why, why must you summon me, Tony? <laughs> I am the Queen of England, I am, but I don't condone Cumberbatch. Because you're so articulate. Cumberbatch is such a asshole douche. <laughs> Everybody loves him because, oh, look at he's Sherlock Holmes and he plays Khan. Every single role he plays is the goddamn same. <laughs> and it's a cool name. He's not a good actor. He plays the same role. Hey, we want someone to open their mouth really large and say, hey, are, are taking every word? Oh, let's, let's cast Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> All right, what else? That made my night. My night. Yeah. Well, it looks it looks like uh, it says after fans and critics called him out for using the term "quote unquote" colored, he issued an apology via People magazine, stating, "I'm devastated to have caused offense by using this outmoded terminology. I offer my sincere apologies." Hmm. I wonder if it was mostly blah, like blah, blah. Uh, American American <laughs> fans, or maybe you know, like I think he owns I slaves. Think so. I think Benita Cumberbatch has slaves in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> They're British. They're all British. Uh, well, in the end, he added that he felt like a complete fool. So there's that. <laughs> They'll right. get over it. Uh, get over do it. we have anything else in the news? Uh, yeah, we have um, three more beheaded under new Saudi king and uh. Spanish judge charges 10 Catholic priests with child sexual abuse. All right. Oh, wow. Which one won't make us more depressed? Let, we have time for one more. Let's do the, let's do the, the Catholic one. Let's, yeah. Catholic one? Yeah. <laughs> well, according to Yahoo News, Spanish judge charges 10 Catholic priests with child sexual abuse. Ten Spanish priests were charged with uh, child sexual abuse on Tuesday in a case brought after Pope Francis telephoned the victim to offer the church's apology, court documents showed. The victim, now 24, wrote to the Pope to say he had been molested when he was an altar boy. The Pope called the man in August to apologize. Spanish news site reported in November, a report later confirmed by the Pope himself. Hmm. So apologies being issued. It goes on. So he's uh, he's tackling this... uh... 
The, the, the kid touching uh, antics. Yeah, it said the victim said the abuse had happened over a period of years from when he was 14 to 17 in a house rented by the abusers in a suburb of, I don't know, Granada. Hmm. It's Granada. I don't even know. What so much, I, I don't understand <laughs> why is so much kid touching within within the... It all started with Michael Jackson. Yeah, it really did. He must have been Catholic. Must have been ordained by the Pope himself. <laughs> but Mike, but Mike... An apology goes a long way. It really does. does. Oh, my children. It looks like the Vatican said I last so, year. Hold on, Kaylee. <laughs> the Pope is here. I just want to say that I am sorry that <laughs> we touch. And yes, I put we in there because I blame myself. <laughs> I was around. Call me the paterno of the church. It's all the Vatican. And all my little priests that touched children were Sanduskies. About And I was paternal. <laughs> I saw, but I turned a blind eye. Because I always remember what the Bible says. And those glasses. Turn the other cheek. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Vatican said last year it had defrocked about 850 priests between 2004 and 2013. Oh, that's a fucking army. <laughs> Who had been accused of sexually abusing mine. They were all tail gutters, too, I bet. <laughs> oh, my poor... Oh, wait, I sound like a queen. Hold on. <laughs> You're going has back has the, the Pope met the, the queen? queen. <laughs> the queen of England. That's a horrible, horrible thing that should not be joked about. If only I had the penalty coach You still kind of sound whistle. like the queen. <laughs> I still sound like the queen. I lost my voice. <laughs> all right. Has the Pope met the queen? <laughs> yeah. All right, that is it for today. We got to go. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll be back next week later. 